thank you for being on tonight's call with Monica Rabella, CPA, titled Final 2013 Deductions, Retirement Contributions, and Record Keeping Guidelines. The call will start right here at the top of the hour. We want to cover a few housekeeping items if you're on the call live today. If you've dialed in on a telephone line, we'll open up the lines at the end of the call so you can ask any questions you might have. If you're listening via the Internet, and you do want to ask a question, down in the bottom um, of the page there's an orange Q&A button. Uh, you can just type in your question right there, click on the Submit Your Question for the Event button, and that uh, question will go ahead and queue up, and at the end of the call we'll read those if they've come through on the Internet. Or, again, if you're on the phone lines, we'll open up the lines and go through the questions, and you can ask them live on the phone. And again, we want to thank everybody for being on this call today with Monica Rebella, CPA and President of Rebella Accountancy, which is a CPA firm that specializes in accounting, tax, and consulting services for hundreds of dentists in California. And again, our topic of the call today is final 2013 deductions, retirement contributions, and record-keeping guidelines. If you are not already a current client of Rebella Accountancy and you've not met her, Monica is a CPA. She has 26 years of accounting and tax expertise, which includes 13 years working with the big four, big eight firms, and over 13 years' experience working with dental practices. She is a past president of the Orange County, Long Beach chapter of the California Society of CPAs and is a member of the AICPA. She has conducted training sessions for accounting firms, and as well lectured on tax and business matters to the California Society of CPAs, UCLA Dental School, and the Orange County Dental Academy. She runs her own firm in Tustin, California, providing accounting, tax, and consulting services for over 300 businesses throughout California, specializing in dental offices and small businesses. Monica, welcome to the call. Thank you, Jeff, and thank you for that kind introduction. Well, tonight we don't have any slides because it's really going to be a discussion. We're really talking about how we're finalizing 2013 here, what we can still do as far as deductions, tax deductions, bringing that tax bill down. And then I had a client that had a lot of really good questions about record keeping. So we're going to go over some record keeping items because we're all now getting our stuff together for our taxes. You know, How long do you need to keep it? A lot of questions come up about that. So... Let's talk about wrapping up 2013. Deductions. What can you still do? Well, you know, we're here at the end of January of 2014, so we're a month after December 31, 2013. I'll tell you, if you've got a business, there probably is still an opportunity. I own my own business. Most of my clients own their own businesses, and we pay a lot of things out of our own pocket. It just happens. We go somewhere, we see something that we want, we go ahead and pay for it cash, we forget, or we put it on the wrong credit card, the business, the personal credit card instead of the business credit card. This is the time to make sure that all the expenses you paid personally that are business related, make sure you are accumulating those, documenting them, make copies of credit card statements if they're on there, make sure you have the receipts or checks to prove that you paid these other expenses. Those could be some final 2013 expenses for your businesses. And I can tell you from working with my clients as well as myself, it can be several thousand dollars. So please don't overlook that we do spend money, our own out-of-pocket personal money for the business, and sometimes we forget about that. Um, so what else can we do for 2013? What else can we drive down that revenue and bring those taxes down? Well, there are retirement plan contributions. Our tax rates are getting higher and higher. I want to emphasize that getting to the retirement plans and putting money away for retirement is now important more than ever. A lot of my clients said it costs me a lot to do it. I'm going to tell you it costs you a lot not to do it. The tax rates are high and they're getting higher. So make sure you are contributing to retirement plans. What can you still do for 2013? Well, if you had your paperwork signed and in place by October of 2013, you could just still do a simple IRA. Okay, you have to have your paperwork signed and in place October October of 2013. If you didn't do that, you can think about it for 2014. 
if you had paperwork signed and in place by December 31, you would have had a 401k with a profit sharing. Now, if you weren't able to do the 401k, but you have all the paperwork in place, you could still do a profit sharing portion. The profit sharing is you, the employer, having some calculations made with the company that sets you up with your plan to figure out how much money you, the employer, are willing to give to employees to share in profits. And you're one of those employees if you've got an S corporation or a corporation. You are one of those employees. So you want to work with the company that set up these plans to get all the W-2s to them because then they will calculate what the amount is you can still contribute for 2013 as a tax deduction even though we're into 2014. You actually will have all the way to September 15th of 2014 to make the contribution. Your half corporation return has to go on extension, but as long as it's on extension, you have to all the way to September 15th of 2014 to make that. It's the same if you have a defined benefit plan. It's another type of retirement plan. Again, you had to have had that paperwork done and signed December 31, so if you had it signed, the paperwork, you again will have till September 2014 to fund your defined benefit plan contribution. It's the only type of deduction we get for a prior year where we get all the way into September of the next year to do it. And the reason for this is that retirement plans are for small businesses as well as large businesses. And large businesses have more employees, it's more complicated, they need more time to close out their year and then make the calculations on what the contribution amount is and they need time to get the money together. So we as small businesses benefit from the fact that large businesses need this extra time. So we all get till September of the next year. It can be confusing, but it's really helpful in pulling our money together. So we've got small businesses where we own the business and we've been paying money out of our pocket for expenses. We want to get those and make sure they're recorded because they actually are loans from us to our business for paying business expenses. And we want to make sure we include those for 2013. We've got the retirement plan contributions. Again, as long as you have the paperwork signed by December 31, 2013, or for the simple IRA October, you can still make contributions. There is one more retirement plan where you didn't need to have your paperwork done, actually two, that you did not need your paperwork done by December 31, a SEP IRA and a regular IRA. You have two type that you did need, not need to have your paperwork done by December 31. A regular IRA for 2013, the contribution is $5,500 a person, you have to have earned income. You have to either be self-employed or have wages, okay? Self-employed or wages. And as long as you have that, you can contribute up to the amount of the wages or the income or $5,500, whichever is less. If you're 50 years old or older, you get another $1,000. You could do up to $6,500. Now, of course, the spouse can have a spousal IRA. They don't necessarily always need to work. They can have a spousal IRA. If you are in a business or you work and your employer has a retirement plan, you may not get to do the full IRA amount. In fact, you may not be able to do an IRA at all. It has to do with how much money you make. So, you know, you do have to look at if your employer has a retirement plan and you still think that you might want to do an IRA, Here's the deal. If you're filing on a joint return and your income is at $90,000, you start losing the ability to do an IRA. If you're single and you have more than $60,000 of income, you start losing the ability to have an IRA on top of a retirement plan your employer already has. When you're married and you get up to $112,000 of total income and you're in a retirement plan with your employer, you cannot do a regular IRA. If you're single and your income gets past 65000 and your employer's got a retirement plan, you cannot do a regular IRA, okay? So keep that in mind. However, if you've got a small business or you're self-employed, you can do a SEP 
IRA, it's SEP, Simplified Employee Plan, and you're, even though self-employed, you can be covered under this. You don't need your paperwork done by December 31. It's another one of these where you can get it done now. The regular IRA, you have to get done by April 15th. That's it. A regular IRA has to be put in by April 15th. With a SEP IRA, you go on extension, you have again until October 15th to actually fund the SEP IRA because our individual returns go all the way out till October 15th. So on a SEP IRA, it kind of go, it goes like this. <clears throat> it's about 20% of your self-employed income, about 20% of your self-employed income. There's some strange calculations about 25%, but you have to reduce it by your self-employment tax and part of the contributions. So it really comes out to about 20% of your self-employed income. Again, you get all the way out to October 15th if you go on extension for your return, and the paperwork doesn't have to be done right now. So it is also another way to get a deduction still for 2013. The maximum you can do is $50,000. So it's either that 20% of your self-employment income or $50,000. There's no catch-up, but $50,000 is the, is the maximum that you can do with a SEP IRA. So I wanted to make sure you knew there's still a few things you can still do to bring your taxes down for 2013. And those are those last things. If you're my client, you certainly can call and we can talk about these. The other things are just make sure you fill out your information for your tax as well. All your charitable contributions. If you do a lot of running around for the charities you volunteer for, you get mileage deduction on top of any money or goods you give to charity. So make sure you fill out your tax information thoroughly so you get all the deductions you're entitled to. Our last topic we're going to have a discussion around is record keeping. Record keeping. I hear this a lot from clients. In fact, I had a client that called me recently. He has a full storage unit packed full of records from patients. He has gone back to the time he started his business in the 70s. And he said, it's time. I've got to get rid of stuff. What can I do? Well, here's the rules of them. There is nothing that's really hard and fast about this stuff, but I'm going to give you some rules of thumb here. First is, if you own real estate and you still own it, you must keep the escrow statements all the way back to the time you bought the real estate. You just must keep them until you sell the real estate. So if you own real estate, you've got to keep your escrows. You've got to keep your refinance information if it's a current refinance. You've got to keep those documents until you sell the real estate. You must keep copies of your improvements, keep invoices, etc., to substantiate hard landscaping, redo the kitchen, redo the bathroom. And when I say redo it in a big way, not just new flooring, but you have torn out and you have redone it. You've got to keep your invoices to prove your improvements. Keep those until you sell the real estate. If you own stocks and bonds and mutual funds, you need to keep that information of when you bought those things until you sell them. So those are examples of things you need to keep until you sell the stuff. You've got to know what you bought things for, and you have to keep that in all the way until you sell it. Other items, things that come and go. The IRS can audit you for three years after fi you file your tax return. Okay, so we're about to do 2013's tax return. Right now, 2010, 11, and 12 are the years the IRS can still audit. Okay, 10, 11, and 12. California tax on another year. So California's got 2009, 2010, and 2011. So 9, 10, 11, and 12. They've got four years for California. You technically don't need to keep your tax returns beyond those periods of time. So you don't need to keep more than four years of your tax returns. But I will tell you, the rule of thumb is to keep them for seven years. So even though those are the years that they go back, you should keep your tax returns for a minimum of seven years. That's the kind of rule of thumb. If you have any losses in those years and you're still using the losses, 
you need to keep the old returns that created the losses you need to keep those until you are no longer using the losses on a current year return and then seven years after that. So that's a little bit complicated if you've got some losses that you're still entitled to be using, but the rule of thumb overall is seven years for tax returns. So I want to let you know that. As far as do I need to keep bank statements? Do I need to keep credit card statements? Do I need to keep invoices? Do I need to keep, you know, my bills, you know, copies of things that I bought? And the answer is this. If you own a business, it's seven to ten years. You need to keep all your invoices. You need to keep all of your things that you bought, your suppliers' invoices for, for your expenses. You've got to prove what you've spent your money on. So you need checks and you need invoices for things that you purchased. You need to keep your invoices for things that you have received money for. You've got to keep how you're invoicing. You've got to keep that information. And again, it's seven to ten years. If you are just somebody that has a W-2 and a home, you don't need to keep things for more than the seven years. But if you're a business, you do need to keep the details, your credit cards for the business, your loans for the business, your invoices for purchases, your checks, your deposit information, your bank statements, you're invoicing for your customers seven to 10 years. If you don't have a business, you're either retired or just W-2s, you don't need to keep your bank statements for more than the seven years, rule of thumb. You don't need to keep your credit cards for more than, than the seven years. That is really it. That is kind of the cutoff period of time. I know a lot of us are now paying online, PayPal, lots of different ways to pay. It's electronic. And my answer to you is make sure you get the receipts. When you do PayPal, you can get a receipt. Make sure you're getting that. I had a client tell me, I pay online, and as soon as I'm done paying, I throw my invoices away. Now, this is a client with a business. You can't do that. You've got to keep your invoices with the receipt that you paid it. Please make sure that you do keep that when you're even when you're paying online. If people don't like to keep paper, want to be green, you want to have everything not in hard copy, great, but your bank doesn't keep it forever. All right? Your bank probably keeps it for a year to 18 months. You need to keep it for four to seven years. Four to seven years. So if that's the case, then you better find a good item in the cloud, a good file cabinet system that's in the cloud where you can save your documents some kind of a document storage that is electronic that has this information that can be kept for this period of time. Just because your bank only keeps it for 18 months, 12 to 18 months on their website for you, doesn't mean they could not get these for you. They could, but they really only go back two to three years. I have never seen a bank go back further than that. So you've got to find a good electronic file cabinet storage and I'm looking into that for my clients because more and more of us just want to be paper friendly. We want to get away from it, be, you know, we want to be green, we want to get away from these things. So we're going to have to more and more look for those opportunities. What do you need to keep if you're audited? Everything I just said. If you get audited by California or the IRS, these are the things they want to see. If you're audited for your personal tax return, they want your W-2s, they want your mortgage statements, they want your real estate bills to prove your taxes, they want you know, your brokerage statements for stock sales and interest and dividend with your 1099s, they want us to the receipts from the charity, they want it all. You've got to keep all that. And remember, I'm telling you, you know, the IRS could go back three years, California four, but the rule of thumb is seven. So there's a lot of information you need to keep for several years that you have to have. So that's what I have to say tonight. Um, and again, we're looking into how to have in the cloud file cabinets that are safe and secure where we can put our documents and not have to keep hard copies. And it will be something that we'll discuss more after tax season and see if we can get that going. So that's what I have for tonight, Jeff. Do we have anyone on the line that, that's sent in some questions or might want to call in with questions? 
Monica, I'll open up the phone lines. If uh, you're on the line listening and you have a question, just go ahead and talk. Let me check online to see if we have any coming through the webcast. And I don't see any at this time, and I don't hear any, so I, th I think we explained everything tonight. Well, good. Well, you know, some people will listen to this after tonight. Um, our schedules are such that we put this out there as a recorded session. You can listen to it at your leisure. I do want to let you know we're going into tax season, so we're going to be dark here for several months. We probably won't pick up our telephone conversations and our webinars again until the very end of May, um, and we'll have some new topics to discuss. If you have some thoughts for topics, please send them to me. Um, share them with me at mrebella at rebellacpa.com. We'd love to have your thoughts on some good subject matters, um, and we'll pick it back up. I look forward to seeing all my clients this coming tax season and uh, appreciate your time tonight. Jeff, thank you as always. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Monica, and thanks again for everybody on the call. If you have a question, if you're listening to this on the replay, give Monica a call at the office at 714-619-0667. Thanks, Monica. Enjoy tax season. Thanks. Good night. Good night.